people kind of need to stop with saying that the family doesn't care, they're not trying, whatever, because I don't think that's true. I think that they really are trying to do better. Hey, bitch. <laughs> Oh my goodness, you guys. So first things first, I was not planning on making this video, but since I made my last video a few days ago, I kind of, I don't wanna say I felt bad, but I was reading through some of the comments and I felt like the overall message of my video was a little misconstrued. And I wanted to make this video to just be a mom. Girl, I put my dad jeans on, you see this? I wanted to make this video because I, really just decided that what good are my reaction videos if I'm not actually giving advice. And in my last video, I was just kind of doing an update on where Day by Day was at in their life, but I didn't really give any advice to help them out aside from just saying that what they were doing was really horrible and potentially a total disaster. When I rewatched my video, I realized that I said something pretty important at the end of my last video. Unfortunately, I think they're surrounded by a lot of bad horse people that are giving them bad advice. And that's just kind of how I feel. You know, once I saw that, I was like, why not be their lesson instructor for a hot minute? Why not make a video actually trying to help them instead of just kind of critiquing their current situation, which is what I felt like I was doing. You know guys, to be honest, day by day, they're not the first ones by a long shot to end up in a situation that's kind of sketchy with a horse that they're not ready for. This happens to a lot, if not at least 50% of riders out there who get ahead of themselves and end up with horses that they're not capable of riding, handling, or owning. This is a video for pretty much anybody who maybe gets into this situation because here's the thing, the end all be all is not just get rid of the horse, throw it away, give it to someone else, you know, on a whim so they can take it because you're scared to work with this horse, you know, because then you put the horse's life in jeopardy and at risk because he's young and experienced, nobody wants him. So no, I'm not going to tell anybody to get rid of their horse in this video. I'm gonna be giving day by day advice and anybody else advice on if you do end up with a young and experienced horse that you're not capable of owning, training or handling, this is how you move forward. But you guys, before we get into this video, I wanna say a huge thank you to this video's sponsor. So thank you so much to NordPass for sponsoring this video. I absolutely love this company. And this is actually a product that I've personally been using for a while. So when they reached out to me, obviously I was so excited to be working with them. If you guys are unfamiliar, NordPass is a unique way to generate secure passwords when you are using online platforms. As you guys know, I mean, it is of the utmost important this day and age with how many hackers are out there to protect your passwords, to protect your online data. I mean, and NordPass, never fails. They're absolutely amazing. I've had so many issues with people trying to hack my accounts, even just here on YouTube. NordPass Password Manager generates unique passwords and remembers them for you. You can access your passwords on any device or browser at any time. It's affordable and secure. It is 100% state-of-the-art encryption. I mean, you have to imagine how much damage someone could do if any of your information was hacked at any point in time. So NordPass can help you avoid all of these situations. It's more than just a password manager. It's an essential cybersecurity tool that makes everyone's lives easier. The password manager is honestly so simple and so easy to use, you guys. You can log in faster, create more secure passwords, which is honestly a challenge for me. Shop and browse faster, save your time. Honestly, this is so useful because when you can Consider the fact that the majority of people online use their own names to create their passwords. Just imagine how easy it is for hackers to get into your account. NordPass can make your entire life much more secure. And there's honestly no reason to not have this. So you guys can click my link down below, which is NordPass slash Raleigh, or use code Raleigh to get your discount and one month free. Plus there's no reason to not try it. There is 
is a 30 day money back guarantee. So thank you so, so much to NordPass for sponsoring this video. I truly love them. I, I love working with them and I also love using their products for not just my personal life, but my business. So I hope that you guys will go check them out. But otherwise, let's get into the video. Close to 8 a.m. I don't even know what time. It is early. I've been getting messages that there's a YouTube channel about to make a video about Sophie and Chance, which is okay. There's something I really want to tell you about this. All right, we are going to feed our girls. I know a lot of it comes from care for us and care for our children. And I know that a lot of you guys have invested interest in us and care for our children. And that means a lot to me that you're worried about Sophie's safety based on the information that you have. And that means a lot to me. And I appreciate you guys caring. And I appreciate you guys sharing all your information because we all have different experiences and um, knowing and being able to hear all of your experiences has helped us in so many ways and so many different um, situations and I appreciate that and I just want you guys to know that I absolutely understand where you guys are coming from especially with the fact that Chance needs training and Sophie is young and inexperienced and I agree 150% if anybody should be mad at Laura and her husband it should be me they said some pretty nasty things to me but here's the thing I'm not mad at them I understand emotions were high they've probably never had somebody criticize them before on the internet and they were probably getting a lot of backlash and taking a lot of heat because people were really upset that they were using a lame horse and they lashed out at me because of it and I don't really Really hold that against them. I mean, I'm an adult. I can move on. I'm not going to hold a grudge against somebody for kind of losing their cool and losing their temper. What I'm saying is I don't really blame the parents uh, entirely because you have to consider this, you guys. Yes, they are the parents and they're the ones responsible for their kids, but the parents, it's not like they're lifetime, lifelong horse people. They're learning just like their kids are learning. And if anything, their kids probably know more about horses than the parents do. I'm not excusing it because I, I agree that if you're in the equestrian community, you should make it your top priority to be knowledgeable, especially if your kids are doing it. But in a way, you know, parents, a lot of times they put their trust in the professionals, like the trainers, the lesson instructors that are teaching their kids to make sure that their kids are learning right. It's not really their fault. And I know a lot of people are going to lose their shit with me for saying that. Trust me, if anybody should be mad at these parents, it's me. And I'm not mad at them because the thing is, you can't really hold it against them for being ignorant when it's not their fault because they haven't been trained or taught by professionals in the industry. And I know that Laura really likes her trainer and the barn that she's at. I think that's great. But my point is, is the trainer that's at your barn might be a decent trainer for beginner riders, might be a decent trainer for like basic stuff. The trainer that's at their barn is obviously and very clearly not good enough to be training Sophie because Sophie's clearly at a point where she's stuck and she's um, having a hard time. She's struggling with her training and needs a more advanced trainer who can help her. Also, there needs to be a more advanced trainer because they have a horse that's super, super green, that needs an advanced trainer, needs an experienced trainer that can get the horse balanced, collected, whatever. So it's not just about Sophie, it's also about the horse. Laura is probably not gonna listen to me if I just come out and say, well, your trainer is trash, don't use him. I hope she's more willing to listen to me when I break it down in a sense of what I just did that makes more sense. It's not that your trainer is necessarily bad. It's just that your trainer is not experienced enough to help you through these issues. You know what, Laura? If you don't believe me, let me tell you this. And I, I mean this from the bottom of my heart. This is not me trashing your trainer. No experienced professional trainer would tell your daughter 
that leasing a five-year-old thoroughbred just because he's calm is a good idea or responsible thing to do. So I hope that tells you something right out of the gate that that trainer is clearly not at the level that you need to be working with your kids to get them to where they need to go. I absolutely agree with that and understand that. I feel so grateful to have the trainer that we have to be at the barn that we're at. But like I said, uh, this lease is giving us an opportunity to discover for real if he is going to work or not. And if he doesn't work, we can walk away. But thank you guys so much from the bottom of our heart. You're welcome. <laughs> I disagree with people who are just blaming the parents entirely because here's the thing. I think that they are trying. And I did say that in my last video. So you gotta give the parents credit where credit's due. They did listen to what I said in my video. And they did take what I say to heart, even though they had kind of an over the top negative reaction to what I said, they still listened to me. They got their kid on a new horse. They rehomed their other one to a good home. The new horse that they ended up with, which they're leasing currently, although I don't think it's a good fit, they did a vet check, you know, they did every single thing that people have been telling them to do. So the thing is, it's not that they're not trying because if they weren't trying, they would still be at square one and they would still have Finn and he would still have issues. I don't want to tell them to just completely ditch this horse. I think it was a really bad idea to buy this horse. And the reason I'm saying that is because I know it's a lease, but what I think they did is I think they signed on for a lease to buy. So they're kind of stuck. I, I'm not really sure if they could back out of it at that point. I, I don't want people to be like, they just need to get rid of the horse because there is a way to go about this responsibly. And I hope that they listen to what I say because no, there's a lot of people who end up with horses they're not capable of working with. I mean, I did when I was 13 with Link. And the thing is, there are ways to go about it responsibly, and I'm going to tell you what I did. And I want this to help out other people who are maybe stuck in the same situation where they're not that good of a rider, they're not that advanced, but they have a horse that's really advanced, needs an experienced rider, and they don't really know what to do. First of all, spend a lot of your time watching YouTube videos of like real professional trainers. There's a lot of really good professional trainers on YouTube that post videos working with horses and make sure that it's a professional, somebody who legitimately has a business, not just an internet trainer, but someone who's actually posting really good videos on working with fresh horses and young horses. I'm gonna put a few of the, the best channels up on the screen that you guys can go and check out that do a phenomenal job of going over young horses, novice horses. If you're a rider who's looking to advance your skill sets and you maybe don't don't have access to an experienced trainer in your area or an experienced lesson instructor and you're trying to get better as a rider or maybe you don't have that much money to take advanced riding lessons, I recommend that you check out Horse World TV, which I know that Matt and Yese are my friends, so I'm not trying to come across as biased, but honestly, Horse World TV is great. I'm pretty sure it I don't know, I think it's like 20 bucks a month, which is way cheaper than even one lesson. And you can learn so much knowledge and information about riding, improving your seat, improving your equitation and your balance. They really go over how to improve yourself as a rider. And you can, again, also find videos like that on YouTube as well. And the reason I recommend videos is because people are visual learners. They're better able to, you know, learn things when they can see somebody else doing it. So definitely watch videos on improving your seat, improving your equitation, improving your balance, helping it make sense to you, and also ways to work with your horse and train your horse because you shouldn't just be relying on a trainer to do everything for you. You should also be wanting to learn what the trainer is doing to work with your horse because it's your horse. You want to know what they're doing. You want to learn how they're teaching your horse these things, how they're getting your horse balanced, 
how they're collecting your horse, how they're building muscle with your horse, how they're riding your horse. You want to know these things, not just to grow your own personal knowledge, but that way you can upkeep that horse's training and riding. Something else that you can do is you can buy books on uh, riding and equitation and riding exercises. These are, when I first got into dressage, I had no idea what I was doing. The first thing I did when I started learning dressage is Firstly, I watched a ton of riding videos on other dressage riders, helping with position, equitation, balance, whatever. Also, uh, I watched a ton of videos on teaching dressage horses, training dressage horses, getting their movements, etc. And another thing I did was I purchased some dressage books that I had recommended to me by professional dressage writers. These are all things that are inexpensive that everyone can do if you don't have the money to take expensive lessons or if you don't have the trainers nearby. You don't have to have a lot of money to do things right and do things efficiently that can actually have really good long-lasting results. So when I was 13, I got Link and he was two years old, as many of you know. I was way over my head with him, but thankfully I had a lot of professional trainer friends who were in their 50s, 60s, who were in my area. And actually I would work for them, taking care of their horses at shows or mucking out their trailers. I would help them out in any way possible in exchange for helping me train my horse. I didn't have any money. I was a broke kid and I still was able to have professional trainers work with me and work with my horse even just a couple times a week because what they would do is they would come out and they would be like, this is what we're gonna do to work with this issue or work with this problem. This is what we're gonna do to teach your horse this, this, and this. And you're gonna work on it for the rest of the week. I'm gonna show you how to do it and how to get it done. And then I want you out here working with this horse on this every single day and I'll meet up with you again next Monday. So literally it wouldn't even have to be every single day working with them. Just once a week they would give me something to do with my horse, one training exercise to do with him to help train him for specific things and help with the biomechanics of how he moved. I can't even tell you how much those trainers taught me. So it's not that it can't happen, it's just the fact that if you want to do it, you really have to try hard and make sure that you learn correctly and you do it right because you don't wanna ever rush these things and you also don't wanna just blow it off on someone else, like, oh, they'll take care of it for me. No, you need to be there every day. You need to be there with your horse grinding through this work every day and learning it for yourself. So my advice, to Sophie is work on your position, try to still take lessons on easier horses. Once you feel comfortable, I suggest that you start working with experienced trainers in your area, not the trainer at your barn, but try to find a traveling trainer, someone who's actually experienced in your area that's willing to come to your barn and willing to work with you and work with your horse even just one day a week. So have them come, have them teach you, have them show you what to do, give you an exercise to work with for the rest of that week until you meet up the next week. Because not only is that going to help your horse, but it's also going to help you. It's going to make you more knowledgeable and it's also going to help you with working with your young and experienced green horse because having a chill mentality is not enough. The horse needs guidance and you need guidance. And that's basically my advice, you guys. I really hope that Day by Day takes this to heart. If you guys have any other questions or maybe you have some young horses of your own and you need advice, I'm happy to answer down below. I'm happy to uh, talk to you guys, but I really hope Day by Day listens to this. Okay, guys, so I just got up and um, I'm getting ready. I'm gonna go in. Um, get ready and then I'm gonna head out to go see Link and um, do a lot of the therapy exercises and stuff that I do with him and um, I'm gonna take you guys along the way. So
So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I know it was kind of information overload, but I love you so much. Thank you to NordPass again for sponsoring this. You can click my link down below to get that discount. But otherwise, guys, don't forget that we have that saddle giveaway this month. I love you, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.